My one day is Thursday, May 2nd, 2019, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for coming this week. We've got a good crowd, so welcome once again to the week in charts. A few regulars and a few new, new people, so welcome new people and welcome regulars. All right, what are we going to talk about? Well, current market conditions, and I think that's going to be our focus mostly this week, and you'll see a couple other things. Uh, your questions, obviously, if you don't mind, keep the questions just so my ADD doesn't kick in. Keep your questions on the slides, and we should have plenty of time to get to your individual stock picks and other questions, too. Any deep questions requiring a lot of thought, I'll cover in the members Q&A session. And if you're not a member, maybe I'll be nice enough to give you a little sneak peek at that. Anyway, hold off on your stock picks if you don't mind. This is for your benefit until we get to the actual charts, and then just ask about one at a time. That way, I know which ones I covered and which ones I didn't. So this week's focus is going to be charts on a chart show. I woke up this morning thinking, well, what am I going to talk about? Well, recently, I was asked about the 10% TFM system and getting a few questions on that. And last week, I said, oh, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm going to cover that. I'll cover it in the live charts, and then I just simply forgot. So... My apologies on that. We'll beat that to death this week. Forest for the trees. And that'll make a little bit more sense. Some things I was thinking about last weekend. And then getting back to the overall market, is winter still coming? And there's a few things that are beginning to concern me a little bit about this market. I guess there's always something to worry about. Before we get into all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often sum it up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now. And then, okay, I want to go over to 10% TFM system again, and I want to update you on where we are now and do a little bit of a walkthrough. What, what amazes me, and even I, I even personally sometimes get a little tripped up, but it amazes me how even these simple, simple, simple systems, I still get a ton of questions on. And you know what? Even I sometimes forget the exact rules or forget a rule. So I think that just shows you right there the importance of keeping things simple. For instance, uh, one of my simplest systems of all, the buy at B, which we'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes, which triggered recently on TIGR and then very recently on PINS, which stopped out. We'll get to that in one second, too. There's a, even a few little caveats to that that I have forgotten. So I think that's is exhibit A as to why you want to keep things as simple as possible. So let's talk about the 10% system. And to those of you who've been around for a while, you've seen me talk about where if a market's going to go from A to C, it's going to have to go through B along the way. And I've gone through this quite a bit, but let me just draw it in real quick. So let's say you've got a market and it goes from A to C and B is somewhere in between. Well, two things, it's gonna to have to go through B on its way to C, and that's the genesis of the buy B system. And then as long as it's near C, and for the end of C is about 10% is a good number, you wanna stay long because if it's gonna to go to beyond C, not beyond C, but beyond C, it's gonna to have to near C. And that's kind of the whole thinking is it's kind of a performance-based system based on the overall market as long as the market's doing okay in other words hovering not too far away from all-time highs then we're going to stay long and if it gets further away than 10 percent from all-time highs we're going to go ahead and exit the trade now we're not using this as a buy and reverse system or we're not shorting with this particular system although it might actually work on the short side. So this indicator I have up here is simply how far away the market is from its 50-week moving high. And if it is more than 10% away, then it's going to be greater than this 10% line. See this 10 right here? If it's less, then it's going to be less than this line. So the, the baseline here is at 10%. As long as we have or I should say the buy signal is as long as you have 
two days of Landry light, meaning that two lows are greater than the 50 week moving average and you're within 10% of all time highs, you wanna stay long. Now on the short side or when you exit, you wanna exit when the market is more than 10% away from that 50 week high and the close is less than the 50 simple moving average. Now you may notice that my, rec my requisites, requisites for exiting are slightly less stringent than buying. And that's to get you out of the market as soon as possible when some danger begins to unfold. Because if you sit around and wait for that Landry light to the downside, you can end up with a pretty serious slide. In this particular case, you can see the market drop significantly below that 50 week moving average before it began to stabilize it. And then of course it later dropped much, much further. But there's no guarantee it's gonna stop at that juncture or it's gonna let you off. So it just seems like a simple close below the 50 week moving average and being greater than 10% away from those new highs is the time to get out. Now, if we take a look at the recent sell signal here, notice that the market, as it began to slide, was more than 10% away from its 50 week high. And you can see that it did close below its 50 week moving average in this particular case. Let me just confirm this. Yeah, I'm getting confused here myself. See, even a simple system like this, it's, I think this number's wrong. It should be 50 week high. Anyway, this is a weekly chart, so I stand corrected. See, even the simplest systems you gotta be careful with. So it's a 50 week high and it's a 50 week moving average. If it closes below that moving average and you're greater than 10% away from that 50 week high, then you wanna go ahead and get out of the way. So notice that it stays bullish as long as you're below 10%, okay? And then notice right here it goes neutral because you're intersecting the 50 week moving average, okay? And then it goes bearish when you're greater than 10% away from those highs and you close below the 50 week moving average. And that was our latest sell signal there, as you can see. Now the market didn't come unglued afterwards, but it did drop about 10% from the signal. So the signal, the signal was on this day here. So the signal, actually, your sell signal would have been right there. Notice that it turned bearish right here after being bullish and then neutral. And then notice right here that you went more than 10% above the 50-week high. Now, it actually gave us a recent buy signal by dropping below 10%, in other words, getting within 10% of that 50 week high and two weeks of Landry light. So in other words, you had two weeks where the lows were greater than 50 week moving average and looks like you were going back towards, at least at the moment, those old highs. Now, Keep in mind, I'm not showing you this as a system that you should blindly follow. What I like to do when it comes to markets is kind of come up with some different little systems and different little guidelines to kind of let you know where you are. But I do think it's interesting that this thing went long and I would have had a hard time getting along the market back then. Now, one thing I did this morning was, and I just went back to the late 80s thinking that this great bull run that we just had would be kind of fun to go in and look at it. And, and I learned a lot in the process and I was actually pretty amazed that it only had two losing trades over the last 30 years. And those two were whipsaws and whipsaws are not avoidable or you can't avoid whipsaws. My little whipsaw filter is two weeks of Landry light 
on the upside and a close below the 50 week moving average on the downside. As I've said, at nauseam, you got to be really careful. If you start putting in too many whipsaw filters, then several things could happen. One, you have in so many filters, by the time you get in, the trend might be over with. So if you require this and that and, and the other thing, this and that and the other thing, then by the time all those things line up, then it's so latent to the trend, you may miss the trend. And you, the other thing you have to be careful with is that if you try to eliminate all losses, you'll end up with curve, you end up curve fitting the data back to historical data. And then the future is not going to be the same as the past. So you got to be really, really careful. And that's why I just put a couple little simple whipsaw filters. And you can see even I was getting tripped up with this system as simple as it is. And it's just only a couple of little rules. So that's why you got to be really careful. Now, a couple of things to gleam from this is that buy and hold wins, believe it or not. And that's a little shocking, but let's not get too excited just yet. But you can see that if we just bought at 278, okay, when we started the test and we held, we would make to today, coming into today, I should say, we would make a 951% profit, okay? If we trade the system, we would only make 824% percent profit and this is the buy and hold is over 30.58 years so let's just say 30 and a half years that's what it looks like now what's kind of interesting though so buy and hold wins but and it's a really big but you avoid over 50 percent in drawdowns and you could sleep peacefully sans FOMO, fears of missing out, for over six years. So you would actually be out of the market 21% of the time. Now, 21% doesn't sound like a whole lot, but 21% over 30 and a half years, that's a long time to be out of the market. And again, as long as you're not worried about the fear of missing out, you would miss, so far at least, now hindsight's 2020. But you would have missed every major bear market. You would have stayed out of the market for years and years and stayed long for years and years, too. So if you look at some of these days in the system right here, you stayed long for 2,758 days. So what's that divided by? I should have put the thing in here. 2,758 divided by 365. So you stayed long seven and a half years on one trade. So I find that really interesting that it would keep you in the major bull markets and it would keep you out of the major bear markets. So now I didn't put all these lower moves in. I had to dig it around to have the time to put them all in uh, today. And they're kind of negligible in some particular cases where the low of the move really wasn't that much lower. In other words, it's a whipsaw. And we'll look at the actual chart here in just one second. But to me, I find this pretty amazing in that, well, buy and hold one, but you avoided a couple of really major bear markets along the way. And that's pretty hard. Let's say you've got, and this is an argument that Greg Morris uses, and I've used it before too, let's say you've got a million dollars saved up for retirement and then you get a 50% haircut, okay? Well, your lifestyle has changed dramatically with that 50% haircut. So it would be very hard to sit through that. And obviously there's no guarantee that it won't keep on going. Now in the twenties, this thing triggered in 1929, an exit signal. And then the market dropped about 80 or 90% from that level. So you might be thinking, well, Dave, that's the depression. That won't ever happen again. Well, let's hope it never happens again. But if we go back to the NASDAQ at 2000, it lost over 70% uh, 
of its value. And I don't know exactly when it got you out on the NASDAQ. We could look at it in one second if one of you guys reminds me. But I guarantee you, you would have missed most of that move to the downside. So avoiding a big bear market is really a, a big deal. And then you're pretty much getting, I'd say, almost just spit, spitballing here. You're getting about 90% of the buy and hold gains with a heck of a lot less risk. Now, I don't want to get into sharp ratios and all that other stuff, but I guarantee you, if you could avoid a 50% haircut every now and then in the system, you're going to do quite well. And the drawdowns, I don't think are that bad, at least on a, a closed trade, trade basis. In fact, in this particular case, you only have a 3% to 4%, you have two little whipsaw trades. And then, of course, the next signal, the next exit signal, is, would have been the big one where you would have avoided a big bear market. So anyway, I just think I'm a nerd, but I think all this is pretty cool stuff. And I like to hand test things because it gives me a really good feel for what's actually going on. If you run the mechanical numbers, sometimes you don't recognize a lot of things that have happened along the way. Now, let's take a look at a chart going back to the late 80s or early 90s. And down here, remember down here is going to stay long as long as you're within 10% of those 50 week highs okay and then it goes neutral but if you're long you stay long if you're short you stay short when it goes neutral but you can see right here turn bullish and it got neutral for a little while okay just when it kind of kissed that moving average and then it went neutral again when it kissed the moving average, went bullish again. Went neutral for a long while in here while the market consolidated. That's like a year. But what's interesting is during that entire year, the market hovered not too far away from its new highs. So remember, this baseline here is 10%. Anything above it means the market could be in trouble. Well, when did the market get in trouble? 1998, was that the Asia crisis or long-term capital management? I don't remember. I think long-term capital management was a little further back. I just read about, I reread about LTCM. Everybody knows about LTCM. If you don't, you need to learn about it because these black swans do occur. But you can see in 98, it got a little ugly for a little while, okay? And the system got you out. And that's all right. So it didn't materialize to the mother of all bear markets, and that's fine. And you can see that you might have had a little whipsaw back here where it got you out just briefly. Let's see, did it actually? Yeah, somewhere in here. It's hard to see. It would have gotten you out, get you back in, and then it gets you out when it gets more than 10% away. And then notice how long it stayed bearish. This is one year, this is two years. So for two years of change, it kept you out of the market. Fast forward to the bull market that started in 2003. It would have kept you long this entire run, okay? And then it would have kept you out for one and a half years during the bear market. Get you back in somewhere around here. You had a little whipsaw here and a little whipsaw here, but the market did tank fairly seriously during that period. And then also right here, you had, you can call it a whipsaw if you want, but that was a pretty serious slide in the overall market. Anybody who held through this should have their head examined, okay? And then I forget the guy's name, but I've talked about it before. Dick, uh, Greg Morris quoted him a while back, and it said, anyone who has kept pace with the markets since 2009, money managers that is, should be scrutinized because did they take aversive moves when they should have gotten out the way? And then you can see it exited back here when it got above, let's see, right here, when it got above 10%, okay? And then now it's less than 10% away and above the moving average, so you're long again. Anyway, I'm a nerd, but I think this is pretty cool because it's a really simple, simple system. And a lot of people work their ass off trying to beat the market, present company included, with all these systems. But it's kind of amazing. The longer you're at this, the more you try to simplify. And that's why I trademarked Trading Simplify. And the more amazed you become with simple things 
that can work. And I know I'm a nerd, but I think that's pretty big stuff. Now, here's some random thoughts on this. A few of the things I've probably already said. Let me just drive the point home. Like death and taxes, some whipsaws cannot be avoided. That's with any system, obviously. My buddy Greg Morris often says whipsaws are frustrating. Bear markets are devastating. You can survive frustration. Now, 12 years and 12 trades in 30 years ain't too bad. The ain't too bad comes from, I, I, I sold my brewery, it's a long story, but I, I sold my brewery about a year ago when I first began selling my house just because I didn't want to deal with moving at all. And anyway, I'd spent thousands and thousands of dollars putting this brewery together and tons of money on ingredients and the beer was probably coming out $5 a glass and that might be exaggeration, it's probably like $10 a glass. <laughs> Anyway, so I brought a keg over to a friend's house, and he had a neighbor come over and, and says, mind if I have some beer? I was like, yeah, go ahead. He goes, well, that ain't too bad. I was like, ain't too bad. This beer you drink is like $10 a glass. <laughs> anyway, so that stuck in my head. So 12 trades in 30 years ain't too bad. And again, simple systems can work. And I think that the longer you're in this business, I think you're going to reach a point where you quit grill hunting and then you start peeling away those indicators and start simplifying things. And then for me, it's almost like a game, like how simple can I make this? Now, buy and hold is hard to beat. Make no bones about it. Unless we go into like a long, extended, choppy market like the 70s, which I wasn't trading back then. I'm not quite that old, but I know... I have a few clients that are, and they tell me about how horrible it was back then. So unless we go into some sort of period like that, I think for the most part, buy and hold is going to be hard to beat. But the bottom line is being able to avoid those big, huge drawdowns and being able to sleep at night sure is really nice. Now, there's no guarantees, obviously, if you want to guarantee buy a toaster. But every big drop in the market has started with a little drop first. And 1987 is sort of the poster child for that. Now, there's no guarantee that we might just have a huge 20% drop of whatever the haircut was overnight. But the market did drop 10% first, and it did close below its 50-week moving average. So you did have that shot across the bow on that one. Now, if you take a look, okay, any questions, uh, sorry, I'm a little ahead of myself. Any questions on the 10% system before we go any further? Show you something real quick. Last week, I went to visit Dick Fruth over in Houston, and I didn't ask him this trip, but uh, I know that uh, he's managing at least a couple hundred million dollars, and he's got a much, 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 much longer term time frame than I do when he looks at things. He's looking to stay with stocks for years and years and years. I am too, but I'm also looking to get into a swing trade and hopefully have it pan out into that trade that lasts multi-years. But a lot of times I'm out in just a couple of days. I took an ogre this morning and something, I was out in five minutes. That's another story. Anyway, as Nick was going through his charts, he had a 50-day moving average plotted. And when he would flip to the weeklies and even the monthlies, I found it interesting that some of these stocks that he was in for years and years and years, they all had Landry light, meaning the lows were greater than the moving average. And this one was is Denny's, D-E-N-N, -N, a little sleepy, boring company. But look at the performance on that. And that's sometimes he gets into these little sleepy companies. And it went from years, it went for years and years and years to stay above the moving average. So something as simple as Landry light, meaning the lows are greater than the moving average, can help to keep you in a trade. And I just thought that was kind of interesting. Something I want to throw out to you. And I'm going to write a little bit more about that in the next now column. Now this slide's a little out of order, but you can see this was the, this is zooming in. You can see this was your sell signal here on that particular day for the system. And then we had a pretty serious drop. I mean, you know, let's say you're holding on here and the market drops another, what is that? 
23, down to 23.50. That's a pretty big drop from there to there. It's nothing to sneeze at. And again, it got you long. Where did it get you long? Well, you've got your less than 10% here, but you wait for the market to have two lows above the 50 week moving average. So you would have gotten long here. The next week, you probably would have hated yourself, but the system says, the system says stay long. Like I showed you earlier, five, six, seven years, it might keep you long. So I just thought this was kind of interesting that it's once again long. Now, even though we have a buy signal and we're in buy and hold mode, right, on this particular system, the question is, is winter still coming? And lately I've been seeing some things that concern me. And in this business and in life, I guess, there's always something to worry about. But one thing that has me concerned is this V-shaped recovery at high levels. And the problem with this is when a market has such an amazing run from this 2300 level, 2390, whatever, all the way back up to this 2900 level over such a short period of time. And I noticed in the last Kirk report, he wrote that it was the fastest recovery in history. So that right there should tell you that it's overbought also. I forget the exact percentage of this, but it's ridiculous. And we'll plot it when we get to the actual charts. And many times a market doesn't move that far an entire year, let alone a few months. So that's the pretty amazing recovery. I'm a little shocked myself. I was pretty bearish for quite a while, and I'm pretty amazed that it's come back so fast. But that doesn't mean that it will keep on keeping on. Now, the Russell remains the rub. As I've been saying quite a bit, it has this big picture of retrace look to it, and it just can't really get through this 160 level-ish, somewhere that level, somewhere around that. So that's a little bit concerning. And until unless we get past that level, I'm going to continue to be concerned about the Russell 2000. Now, keep in mind that I take things on a setup-by-setup -setup basis. If I see a setup I like, I'm going to take it. It's kind of interesting. This morning, I stopped out of PINS, PINS, Pinterest, which we'll talk about in one second. But I was looking at my portfolio, and I'm like 90% cash right now. And cash doesn't bother me. I like having a lot of powder dry for opportunities when they present themselves. And the reason that I have so few longs is one, money management, of course, stopping out of those that are no longer trending. And two, the database really hasn't generated anything. And that's where you have to be really careful not to feel that performance anxiety, not to feel like you have to rush out and do something to try to make some money. You just have to be patient. patient. And I stopped myself short of doing a presentation again on patience, but just know that if you can learn how to be patient, you will do really well in this business. And I know I'm guilty as charged. I have a very hard time being patient, believe me. Now, another thing that concerns me a little bit is debacle de jours. Now, this might not be the best example, but this morning I ran a report on FinViz and I found it interesting that Cree, which actually turned into a beautiful opening gap reversal. That's the one I was in for five minutes, but uh, that's another story altogether. But I find it interesting that a big fat stock like Cree in the semiconductors and doing so well can get torpedoed so hard overnight. Now, I've been seeing quite a few of these debacle the jours and going through several thousand stocks every night. So maybe this is, isn't the best example, but I wanted to show you something that was relevant and live. And this is actually coming into today. The stock took a pretty big haircut overnight. And these, these are other stocks in here that got, took some pretty big substantial haircuts too, as you can see. But some of these are already in downtrend, so I wouldn't get too excited about that. But when you see a stock that's headed higher like this, it shows that there is some vulnerability out there. So the back of the jurors is something I keep an eye on on a day-by-day -day basis. And again, and looking through those charts every day. And those that are especially concerning are those that don't have the opening gap reversals. Now, some specific areas out there like drugs, and you can see we have a bow tie 
down here. We also have a thrust followed by a pullback, which is the first thrust. So that's a little concern, concerning, I should say, health services, another one of those areas. Bowtie down, not quite off of all-time highs, but the other peak is a bit of a spike, so that's a little concerning. Also, even without the bow ties, you got a thrust down followed by a retrace. So that's cause for concern. Now, take a look at the energies, which about a week or so ago were doing okay. They're now beginning to look a little questionable. And we'll take a look at the, do look at the dollar to see if that's maybe in part of what's going on here. But at the least, you can see this 1150 level, and this is the Morningstar Industry Group in uh, energy. You can see that, number one, it has sold off fairly hard recently. And number two, it hasn't made any forward progress in one, two and a half months. So that's something else that's a little concerning. Now, metals and mining looks even worse, as you can see here. It has begun to break down in earnest. So not the end of the world, but there are quite a few sectors that are beginning to break down. Now, if you're shifting gears, any questions on anything so far? Shifting gears, if you are a member of DaveLander.com, a gold member, that is, not a free member, but a gold member, make sure you join the Facebook group, and I'll approve you right away. And when you log in to the members dashboard, you'll see it up here. And again, I'm a nerd, but so far it's been really great. Somebody had pointed out Pinterest in there, and I've been watching it, but I had a lot going on in my life lately, like we all do. And I had totally forgotten about the fact that it was day five and somebody brought it up. And I think I have that post in here somewhere. But anyway, so it was a buy there. The little sardine fish took off. Hit the initial profit target, which I think I had set at four points. And then, unfortunately, came right back in and stopped me out at a small gain. But it's better than poking the eye. I mean, that's like a 20-something percent gain over a short period of time. That's pretty awesome. Now, you don't want to play that annualized game too much. But if you could do this every now and then, kind of like we did on TIGR trade, then your life will be pretty darn good. Oh, there it is. So here's the post from John. You can see I'd forgotten to actually check the stock on that particular day. So I got a little reminder like, hey, Dave, it's day five. I'm like, oh, man, thanks for a reminder. And that's kind of the, where I'm going with this is that the ultimate goal with this whole members area is to get everybody up to speed and for us to create a mastermind group. And that's kind of what I was thinking early on. And then after I went to Charlie Kirk's retreat, and met with a lot of the people there and worked with a lot of people there who are very accomplished traders and very successful in other businesses too and, and now are becoming successful in trading. It made me realize that that's kind of where I want to be longer term, interacting with people who have rose up through the ranks and who get it and that we can help each other. So here's a case where John had pointed this stock out and I was it was on my radar, but I totally forgot about it. So I think that's kind of a, a cool thing where we can help each other out because we all need help in this business, obviously. Okay, this is left over from last week. That was a ticker trade. Now, along those lines, obviously, if you truly want to be helped, become a member of DaveLander.com. And through the learning management system, we could figure out where you need help. Over the years, as I've been saying quite a bit, I've been very inefficient in helping people trying to help on a one trying to help people on a one for one basis and it's actually created some physical problems and actually just I'm currently recovering from a surgery I got a scar about five inches long on my arm from spending too much time trying to help everybody one-on-one -on -one. and then now the one-to-many model is where I'm going and the Facebook group is part of that the Q&A all the courses and all and just like recently i don't know this person's gonna take a picket on them but they're probably not here they got into a trade and freaked out they went in went out a complete with zero money management plan and all they'd have to do is go into the money management module spend a few minutes there or an hour or so and then they'd have a plan for the trade okay let's take a look at the peas real quick and then we'll talk about some other areas s p 500 
down about a half a percent, not the end of the world. But as I've been saying, V-shaped recovery at high levels. And the reason I make such a big deal about this is the market can only go so far so fast. And so let's go ahead and measure that just for SMGs. So that run was 25% in about four months, four months and change. That's a pretty big deal. Market doesn't go 25% that often in a whole year, even several years. So the point is, it's hard for someone to run a race right after they have ran a race. And that's got me a little bit concerned. Now, keep in mind that a double top never works out or usually rarely works out as a textbook type of double top. Usually it'll overshoot it or stall well short of the double top. And that traps the most amount of people on the wrong side of the market when it does that. But so far, the market is does have a tiny bit of that double top look. I wouldn't get too excited just yet. But until unless we break out the new highs and stay there for a while, I would remain very cautious. Same action going on in the NASDAQ, although the NASDAQ's kind of hanging in there a little bit better, at least today. It's only down about a third of a percent, but just right off of those all-time highs. Once again, Russell 2000 still remains very concerning, especially when you take a look at like a weekly chart here. You can see so far it looks like a big picture retrace rally. And again, some of these other sectors, energies still look questionable, at least shorter term. Metals and mining kind of imploding. Let's take a look at the, do at the dollar, like I said. The dollar has a little strength to it, and that might be putting a little pressure on the commodities because the commodities are dollar denominated. Let's take a look at the drugs that I mentioned earlier. You can see so far just kind of retracing after this big slide in here. And again, health services looking questionable. And if you drill down within health services, especially areas like the instruments and the appliances, as you can see, they're bow tied down and they're beginning to look a little dubious. So I've been really cautious, especially in those particular areas. And then it's going to have to be the mother of all setups before I get really excited. Now, some, some areas are kind of hanging in there. Software in general has been banging out new highs in here looking pretty good. Semiconductors are doing okay. So far, they pull back a little bit, not that deeply. So they're kind of hanging in there. And there's a few other areas that are doing okay. So obviously, and that's not no big shocker, that when the market, with the market at new highs or near new highs, a lot of areas will also be at or near new highs, such as retail. But a lot of areas like retail are taking on the appearance of the market itself. So uh, there's always something to worry about. And the other thing, as I've been saying quite a bit, I can't really find a setup to save my life, at least nothing that I like. And people ask me all the time, well, Dave, you know, with your system, wouldn't you end up with, with so many setups that you can't take them all and your portfolio is completely full? Well, in some cases you might, but in those cases, the market is doing so great. You don't care that you are. And then also you're doing so great. Those positions are hitting the initial profit target. You're scaling out. And before long, if they all hit the initial profit target, now you have 50% of your portfolio available to buy new stocks. But like right now, even though the market is not too far away from all time highs, I pretty much can't find a setup to save my life. And a couple of people have started the service and then quit like, oh, this guy never does anything. So no, it's not that I never do anything. There are times when we have a lot of action going on and some people actually complain about keeping up. There's other times, and again, that, that patience thing keeps rearing its head, its ugly head. It's like you have to be really, really patient and just wait. And if there, any, if there is any secret to trading, it is patience. Anyway, anyway, I feel like I've pontificated enough. You guys want to talk about, and girls, want to talk about any individual issues or any other questions? Feel free to start punching those issues in now. All right, we've got a quiet bunch today. No stocks? See, I told you those, those stocks. <laughs> I told you it was hard to find a setup. Yeah, but the only place I've been finding a little action lately has been in the IPOs. We had the Tigger trade, TIGR, we had the PINs trade, PINS, and there's a couple more that we're keeping an eye on. But other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot. 
And then I've got to be careful not to trade out of boredom, but I've been experimenting a little bit with opening gap reversals in big issues because I'm here anyway. Okay, Pens is a pullback. Yeah, I'm going to say possibility on that one. Definitely possibility. I was looking at it earlier. I actually was thinking that this could go into my trading service really soon as more of a, a core type of setup. By core setup, I mean pullback. It's had a nice run higher, and I'm now pulling back. I'd actually like to see it pull back a little bit more deeply. I have been a little bit more selective in more recent times, and I think that's where I was going earlier, and I'm not sure if I got there or not, so let me just close that loop. Earlier, I was talking about people thinking that you'd have too many setups and you'd have two, you wouldn't have room to take setups in the portfolio, especially if the market's at new highs. Well, in this particular case right now, I'm just having a hard time finding setups. And that's usually a microcosm of, of something bigger going on and you need to pay attention. doesn't mean that it can't improve over the next few days, few weeks, few months, whatever, but it's telling me, hey, let's pay attention to what's happening in this market. And I've already heard sell a man go away. That actually doesn't work. Okay. That's just one of those things that rhymes and that sounds like it should make sense. Like if the glove don't fit, you got to qu quit, <laughs> you know, things like that. So not true, but yeah, I think pens should be on your radar as a possible pullback. I'd like to see it a little more deeply. So the point I've tried to make is that I have become more selective in more recent times and that has kept me out of trouble. And, and I, it's put me 90% in cash, too. So that's where I am with that. All right, any more? Going once, going twice, quite a bunch today. All right. Well, as usual, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you have anything unanswered, you can shoot me an email at daviddavelander.com. And like I said, I'll either cover it in a week of charts or if it's an answer that requires a lot more thought. I'll put together a little presentation and cover it in the Q and A session. If you don't, if you're not a member of DaveLander.com, then what the hell, what the hell are you waiting for? Then, no, I'm half kidding. Uh, then I'll give you access so you can check out the um, the Q and A session. If we don't talk between now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see all you guys and girls again next week. Thanks so much.